Jay here for Stratford Paddock. This is Off The Bar, brought to you by Green King Sport. Joining me are two absolute beer moths of the Manchester United fan base. Hello. We've got Mr. Wow. Joe Smith. Hello. How are we? Uh, slightly frustrated, actually, but uh, all right. Anger levels, are they still? It's, it's, it's a mixture of all, loads of different things. I'm, I feel a lot, slightly better. I thought the performance was actually okay. And yet, we've got this thing where we've lost another game, and it is massively frustrating. Yeah, I share your... Share my pain. Uh, also, as well, a man who needs no introduction, but I'll give him one anyway, Andy Tate. Andy, how are we? Proud, gutted, and with an axe to grind against VAR. Good yeah. lad, good lad. I love it when Andy Tate's got an axe to grind. Yeah, it's my favourite thing in the world. Make sure you're getting involved in the comments, and also hit that like, share, and subscribe button. Subscribe to the channel if you're not doing so already. Joe, I'll mm. start with you. I'm going to talk briefly about VAR. Because yeah. we're going to talk about all the things that are going against United. VAR, the media, pundits, look. Everyone's kicking off Injuries, now, they? everything. Yeah. I just want to touch on VAR quickly and then we'll move on. Because we have discussed it quite a lot post the Copenhagen game and even before because we've had no luck with VAR. But there were so many incidents during that game which yeah. could have gone in United's favour or could have helped United that didn't. Yeah. That they either didn't look at or they looked at and decided were, there was nothing to... to, to Thought to deal with, yep. or they looked at it and decided United needs to be punished. It was almost farcical. It's just, it's just getting horrible. Yeah. Football as a spectacle, like if you look, at, if you think of football as like a meal, and you look at the ingredients that go into it, there's, it's been massively over seasoned by the VAR part of the minute in it. Okay. It's like that's all you can taste. Yeah. You're watching football. You, Oh, this is just a VAR sandwich. Yeah. Football. That Tottenham uh, Chelsea game the other day. The whole thing was just a VAR fest. It was literally let a let some blokes in a van referee a football match. Like it, I, I, the main memories of that game were Tottenham's high line and VAR. The yeah. main memories of the Galatasaray game are uh, uh, not Galatasaray, sorry, Copenhagen are Hoyland doing really well and VAR. Like I'm sick of the only thing I remember about football matches being VAR. It's so frustrating. It doesn't have it doesn't. It, it doesn't enable a smooth watch. It doesn't make you excited. We've gone over n numerous times about how it ruins goals, but even just taking that away, take the goals away, it's just not enjoyable to watch football as much. And I, I think like it shouldn't be a sequences of VAR decisions leading to 13 minutes of stoppage time, leading to four, five, six disallowed goals a game in some circumstances. Like it's just crap and it's not fun. And it doesn't, you know, like, like I'm saying before, I'm eating a, sam a football sandwich and all I can taste is VAR and I don't want that. It should be a little garnish to make things better. It shouldn't be the entire game is built around VAR and how that interferes and affects the rest of football. I, I, would, go as, I would go as far as to say now, get rid of VAR, except, obviously the goal line technology is great, don't need to change any of that, perfect, that's fine. Extend it corner flag to corner flag, so we're not having these Newcastle versus Arsenal situations, uh, we're not having these Man United versus Brighton situations. Have the semi-automated offsides, because offside is yes or no, if, you inter if you're interfering with play or not, that's the ref to decide in the moment. If the person who scores is offside, or the person who assists is offside, and they touch it and they bring the ball down, that can be automated. They are the only things VAR should be doing. I don't want red cards, I don't want tackles, I don't want penalties. Put that back in the hands of the referees, even if you have to have four uh, fourth officials. So instead of having uh, 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 you know, a fourth official on one side and nothing on the other, have more refs around the pitch if you need to. But this whole thing of like, we're just literally, it's just a daisy chain of VAR decisions. That's what football feels like at the minute, going from one VAR thing to the next. And it's just boring. And I'm sick of talking about it. And I'm sick of the fact that that's all there is to talk about. It's ruining the experience of football and I can't be honest with it. Thank you, Joseph. I appreciate <laughs> that. And I pre I pretty much agree with all that. And it, it's not just that VAR is bad, and I agree with what Joe said, and I think it is ruining it. It's ruining the enjoyment, and you're not celebrating goals like you should, and you're always waiting for that decision. And you mentioned the Spurs-Chelsea game. There was all those disallowed goals. I think there was about four in the end. I can't yeah. remember, but there seemed to be one every other minute. But also, when it comes to United, everything seems to be going against us with VAR. It seems like every time they go, almost every time they go to VAR, it's a way of stopping United getting a goal, like we did at Fulham, or giving the opposition another goal 
the, or a penalty or a red card, as we saw against Copenhagen. I don't know, it seems like VAR's working against us. That's the feeling I get. What do you think about it? I think it is, because I think it's in January. The, the, the Manchester derby equaliser, the VAR, the check, the, the absolute meltdown from social media. It, 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 was, it was a national scandal. You could, you could write to your MP, you know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? It, it was probably debated in Commons and we didn't know about it. And I, he got to the following game against Crystal Palace in that January. Scott McTominay was balled off the, the and the Vile checks it, never gave a pull there. Yeah. We, they go, get a free kick last minute, equalised, that's two points dropped. So you like you fast forward to now, at the start of the season, we've been, let's say, I can, I can ex, ex, accept what we did against Wolves, Unana, done, that's a penalty, fair enough. But it seems from that moment on, we've been screwed shafted anywhere, anal probe by aliens, you name it, we've had it done. So we got Nacho, you've got the uh you got the decisions from the let's say Marcus Rashford's ear so called handball against the uh, uh, the handball uh, against Crystal Palace when we should yeah. have had a pelt uh, Marcus Rashford with the ball across the line. Well they say if Newcastle's was allowed, why wasn't ours allowed? Equalizer. So uh, decision after decision after decision and it's just killing game. I'm not entertained anymore. And last night was the cherry on the top of the cake, man. Enough is enough. Like you say, the, the product is damaged and you're getting pundits who are trying to back it into a corner now. They're trying to damage limitation with vice, damage limitation. Like you say, Arsenal are tearing up seats in the away end, going demonstrating. We've had Liverpool going, wanting replays, bloody hell. It, uh, enough's enough. I'll say this again. I'll keep saying this. It will be a major decision. It will be a major incident. And it will cost somebody big time. A team in the Premier League, a team will walk off. Manager will come and off. And you'll have to have... The game will be abandoned. Mm. Uh, that will be coming. That, that's what they're scared of. That's my opinion. That will come. And you'll end, uh, and the team who gets, like you say, done, mm. who gets stitched up, They'll have pro that points for protesting. No, it, 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 it could open a whole box of do, tricks. Do you know what? I, I've been thinking about this and I feel like we're not there yet. And I'm not saying we are or even close, but it does almost feel like this is heading towards an almost European Super League type feeling amongst fans mm. where it's like, this keeps going. Yeah. You're going to have a reaction. Now you're saying there, a manager could go to his team. Do you know what? No, no, off. I, I get that. And I think there's... Seen, I'd seen him like with Man he United was, in the Champions League two years ago. We Leo. scored a goal with no, Giggs. No, Leo, Leo walks Leo. off, didn't he? Yeah, but, but like, you feel like with Arteta, mm. he's losing it. And his, his club haven't criticised him. They've backed him and the FA have gone, hang on, OK, we'll look at it. And now he's got this dossier. I, I'm not saying there's going to be rights or anything, but it does feel like all fans are now getting to the point where they're fed up with VAR. Yeah. And all clubs are getting to the point where they're fed up with VAR. It just feels from a United point of view, and yes, I'm biased, that we're seeing more decisions go against us than other clubs are. And like Andy said, ever <coughs> since the Onana one against Wolves, mm. it's like every single game there has been a big seminal VAR decision, yeah. a pivotal moment in the game that's gone against us. Yeah, and it doesn't, like you said before, there's not been many things certainly since I started doing this and since, I mean, just any time watching football where almost all fans from all clubs pretty much agree on something. Yeah. And I've, I'm yet to meet a person who says they like how VAR is currently being rolled out. The, what, the closest you ever get to that is, it's not the technology, it's the people doing it. Well, that's, that's what we've got. That is what the technology is at the minute. It is people doing it. So if you don't like the people doing it, then that's VAR you don't like. It's like saying, oh, you know, it's knives kill people, not people. Well, yeah, someone has to do the stabbing. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? And I, I think like, yes, tech, theoretically VAR could work, but the only version we've got is this current one and it ain't working. Yeah. So uh, it's very, very rare you get people agreeing on things. Like you said, the Super League is, is a great example of it where almost everyone went, actually, F this. We're not having it. We're not having it. And, yeah. and like I said, I don't think we're quite at that point, but if you'd have said that a couple of months ago, Andy, about people walking off, I'd have thought, what are you on about? Now, like you said, now you've seen oh, Klopp, well. it's suggesting that games could be replayed. Now you've seen Arteta calling it a disgrace, saying that he feels sick to be part of it. Like, and, and, and clubs releasing statements that then back their manager, and even in the Liverpool case, sort of further what their manager said, we'll, we'll go down every avenue we can to, to, to you know, see change and all that. I think if you did a vote now, amongst fans certainly, and even maybe amongst clubs, if there was a, sort of a referendum on VAR, 
I think it would be very, very close to being, you know, kicked out. I think if you if you brought it, you know, journalists, pundits, fans, and clubs all voted, all the people involved in football, I think that VAR would be gone. And I don't think that's the case up until really the last sort of twelve months or so. It's mad because you you mentioned there the, the Spurs Chelsea game. Yeah. As, a, as an example, when you look back at that game, all you think about is VAR. Yeah. You think about Eric Dyer's goal getting disallowed. You think I think Sterling had one disallowed. You think about a doggy's red card or the one he didn't get as a yeah. red card. Think about it was it's like VAR, VAR, VAR. When I look back at things that have gone our way and things that haven't, like two thousand and eight season when everything was great, VAR wasn't around then. Do I think, oh, it, it was controversial, it was this? Not really. No. When you look at, when we've had things against us, obviously Aguero's goal, for example. Yeah, Porto. Yeah, there's not, it's not all VAR, is it? There wasn't, a, no. the Porto one, sorry, was where you say, okay, there was got a lot of controversy. But most seasons, there hasn't been oh, sorry, loads okay, of controversy. Yeah. Yeah, right. The Porto yeah. one was controversial. Yeah. That's sorry. where you could have done with VAR. And maybe you go Chelsea in 2010. But by and large, it's not like there's loads of controversy in every single game when you look back at it. But now, when you look back at games, there is. Yeah. Every single game almost, you go, well, there's a controversial decision there. There's a controversial, like, big, the biggest games this season so far, if you look at them, there's been controversial decisions in them. Yeah. City versus United, you mention it. Hoyland, um, sorry, Hoyland foul on, on Rodri, yeah. the penalty. Newcastle versus Arsenal, the Andy Gordon goal, all the furore over that, was that. Spurs versus um, Chelsea, countless VAR decisions. Then you've got, Arsenal versus City, again, controversy there yeah. with, with what went on. I think, was it Kovacic and should he have gone to VAR and all the rest of yeah. it? Like, it's like every single game is dominated yeah. with this thinking and discussion about VAR. And when I look back at football, yes, the Porto game and yes, a couple of games, the word decisions where you go, oh, games we go, oh, that, that you know, could have been refereed better or decisions against us. But by and large, it isn't like that. Now it's every single game is like that. Do and know, we don't need it. I think one of the big reasons for that is there were, there's always been controversial things happen. There's always been referees making decisions, getting penalties wrong, missing things. Someone got elbow behind him and they didn't give the red when he should have done. That's always gone on. Football hasn't changed because of VAR in terms of how people are playing it. But the, the thing is now, because every decision is a two minute wait. And if you think of like the percentage of a broadcast of a game of football, if you're watching the game, obviously, if you're in the ground at Old Trafford, you don't even see the VAR decision. So, you know, it's slightly different. But if you're watching a game, how much of your time is spent watching VAR on the screen? You're looking at 10 minutes a game. You know, you're looking at over probably 10% of, of your experience of a football match is VAR. In the past, a refereeing decision, whether it was right or wrong, took three or four seconds. Maybe occasionally, the ref would go over to the, to the linesman and, and have a, a chat for 20, 30, 40 seconds and then make a decision. Refereeing decisions didn't dominate the viewing experience of, as a football fan. Now it does. Now we're seeing the referees being pretty much the main characters. There's, we see more, t like, what is it? The average player when they play a game of football is on the ball for like two minutes. Yeah. VAR is on the ball in the game, a bigger part of football than any individual player in any given football match. That isn't right. The ref shouldn't be the main thing in a match. Do you know what I mean? This is the issue. There's loads of games, I'm sure, with little shitty decisions. But like you said, we don't remember them for that because that wasn't the focus. VAR has become the focus of football, you know, partly just because it's on the screen the most. And that's just shit. It could get worse. It could really get worse. Like I used to say, how long before a team gets dragged off? Yeah. How long before a game's abandoned? How long before the crowd? What the yeah, hell? Yeah. The crowd gets... A, a riot at a ground. I'm just saying it. I'm not saying it should happen, but I tell you what, you, you, you t you're on the edge of the cliff t looking down, and it could happen. It's not far off. How, how, how likely do you think it is, Andy, that something happens with VAR in terms of the authorities, the governing bodies, the FA, the Premier League, UEFA, FIFA, whoever, change something, do something? Do you think that is going to happen? Can you see a, a way that they go, look, no one likes this, it ain't out helping? Let's let's change it. Or it would take it. a major major incident in Europe, say a big match, the game's abandoned. Mm. Like you say, nas national uh, worldwide TV game. Like you say, that they're the only they're only on the ball in in finals and last days of the season, aren't they? They're all because uh, it's a hot potato. It would take a major incident for them to reconsider. It really would. Can you see that, though? Because you could see a major incident. I could see a major incident. So do you I think, think that could lead it, to change? It could. It, a major incident. Let's say you, you could have the players dragging off, like you say, points, dots, appeals, this, that, the other. 
it could go, let's say, the crowd, the, the stadium, could you play, everyone please mm. leave the stadium you know, now. No, I'm not having it. it. Do you know how it everyone, feels? What the hell's going on? Do you know how it feels to me a little bit? Like, you know F1? Yeah. Maybe not as much now, but a little bit now, but back in the day, it's like the race had finished and certain teams would go straight to the, the office to try yeah, and argue yeah, yeah. with the, the officials the officials, and go, actually, if you look on that lap, he broke a rule there mm. and they'd appeal and they'd be like, the lawyers would get involved and it's like, no, this isn't done. This isn't finished. Yeah. And for the next week, yeah. they'd be giving points deductions, yeah. time slots, people changing positions yeah. and all that. Yeah. It's like, can we do that? And I think that's like the way football's going. Yeah. It's like, it's like when a decision happens, hang on a minute, or a goal goes in, wait a minute, there's, there's, no, it's not done yet. Yeah. And even after a game's finished in terms of like what Liverpool did, wait a minute, we might be able to, to get, I know it was far-fetched, but let's get the game replayed. How yeah. long before that actually happens? Going back to United though, VAR yeah. has been against us. I'm going to run quickly through this before we move on because I don't want to labour the point too much. We've had the Spurs, Romero handball. We've had the Arsenal, uh, Gabriel Fallon, Hoyland. Arsenal, Ganacho offside goal. That could have gone either way. I've watched it a million times. I still can't tell whether he's offside or not. Uh, Brighton, the Hoyland disallowed goal, as Andy mentioned there. Andy Gordon one was given, as wasn't, why? Crystal Palace, Joel Ward handball. City, ha Hoyland foul at 0-0. City, the foul on Hoyland, I think it was John Stones, at 1-0. Yeah. So many decisions. Then we've had the Copenhagen game as well, let's not forget, where it just seems to be against us. And it's not just VAR that seems to be against United. And I mean, this isn't just like some sort of victim mentality from United fans or sulking or, you know, just looking for excuses. We, we'll criticise the team, the player, the managers, whatever, yeah. when they deserve it. But let's be honest here, there's a lot of people that are sort of revelling in what's going on at United and attacking United for silly reasons. For the 23-24 season, Off The Bar is sponsored by Green King Sport, where football is more than a game. Yeah, and Green King Sports pubs are showing every single televised Manchester United game this season. So don't sit at home with some grubby little dodgy stream. Go down to the pub, get your mates, and check it out at a Green King Sport pub. This season, Green King have launched the Green King Sport Instagram page, which is full of fan content, deals, and competitions. They've been doing loads of giveaways and prize giveaways, including Champions League final tickets and shirts as well, so you don't want to miss out. The link to the page is in the description, so make sure you give them a follow, and you won't just be the first to find out about all those giveaways, all that great stuff. You'll also be helping out Stretford Paddock as well, so click the link in the description, and thank you once again to Green King Sport. And after the Copenhagen game, where we saw Rasmus Hoyland become joint top scorer in the Champions League this season, I think yep. he's got five goals, yep. the same as Alvaro Morata. He's been struggling in the Premier League for goals and for chances, to be fair, the kid. Banging him in in Europe, goal against Bayern Munich, goals against Galatasaray, goals against Copenhagen, playing really well. After the game, he was interviewed for TNT, and they asked him about the first 20 minutes. They sort of fed him a question, and fed, like almost leading him to an answer. Yeah. How do you think you played in those first 20 minutes? Everything was going really well. And he said that. He said, you know, and, and they sort of said, you know, forget the result. What about those first 20 minutes? Yeah. And he said, well, if you don't look at the result, those first 20 minutes, we did quite well. Yeah. So TNT quoted that part of the, 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 the interview, mm -hmm. posted it on Swear, which as we all know, we've all experienced it, can be something of a cesspit. And then everyone started trolling him. Yeah. And, it, and in the end, TNT deleted it. Because I think even they realise, wow, we've, we've dropped one here because everyone's just getting at the kid. We've seen Sport Bible, who yeah. hardly a bastion of journalistic integrity, but they then took that and were like, oh, fans say it's the most ridiculous comment they've ever heard in the world about what Rasmus Hoyland said. It just feels like everyone's on at us at the minute. VAR's yeah. on at us, pundits are on at us, which we'll get to in a minute. And the media as well. It feels like there's a real sort of, it's fashionable to get at United. Yeah, I saw a clip as well. I mean, that on Hoyland is, is just ludicrous. Why are you asking someone a question with specific parameters? And then when he answers within those parameters that you set, you're clearly slagging him off. Like, yeah. basically, putting a quote out there that obviously, out of context, looks like he's going, well, oh, let's just pretend we didn't lose. And yeah. he's not saying that. He's no. adding, Like, this is why politicians and footballers give answers that are stock answers, stock phrases, boring shit, because when someone actually, you know, agrees to your premise and goes with it, then they get absolutely caked in, f like, hell. Like, it happens every time, and, and some of it, I, I, maybe TNT sort of overlooked what they were doing, maybe they didn't have enough characters, but I, I think to clip that out, and to, to quote, if you don't look at the result and only take the first 20 minutes into account, we did quite well. You know he's going to get shit for that. I, yeah, I know you're being 
playing a little bit devil's advocate there, yeah. giving them the benefit of the doubt somewhat. Yeah. I'm not buying it. No. I know you're I know you're just I set think they knew level. exactly what they were doing. Yeah, me too. Thrown a kid under the bus. Let's not forget, a twenty year old has been struggling. He's gutted, he's just come off the pitch. He's played really well. His team have lost despite his two goals. He feels aggrieved with some of the decisions he's had against us. He's speaking in, obviously, he's not his native language as well. Let's not forget that. He's given a good answer to a question that was, as Joe said, within parameters, and they've used that as an excuse. And then Sport Bible as well. Fans rip into Hoyland after the most embarrassing, in quotes, football quote they've ever seen from a footballer in an interview. You were saying before, that person who's saying most embarrassing quote ever seen from a footballer in an interview is some no name yeah. no follower it's, it's random bloke on, on twitter. twitter i think that's how they describe it yeah one fan on twitter said it's the most embarrassing and quote ever seen from a footballer in an interview if you want to go on what one person on twitter thinks you can literally find any opinion on earth yeah. you could say you know, football bloody hell someone would have commented that saying this is the most embarrassing thing i've ever seen yeah. a manager say before again like if you want to find it, you can. And that's why I think Sport Bible there, they know what they're doing. They're taking the piss. They're trying to get hate. They're trying to stir shit up. And, and like you said, I don't want this to be like a, oh, you know, oh, everything terrible for United. But literally look at the table of who's gained and who's, and who's been hurt from VAR decisions this season. United have lost more goals and more points than anyone. So it's not like we're doing this despite the facts. This is just with the facts. Do you know what I mean? Do you know, it's do you know just what, as, ridiculous. As, as well, and I don't want to go deep here, but let's let's be honest about it, yeah? Half of these accounts, whether it's Sport Bible or CNC or whoever, will be the first ones to praise Vincent Company when he speaks about one of his players' mental health. Mm. And he says we need to address that. And yeah. play, players can suffer from mental and trolling is bad and be kind and we need to stop this and football is under a lot of pressure and yeah. if they're really struggling and you've got a young 20 year old kid who's going through a bit of a time of it and you're trying to encourage people to have a dig at him try yeah. and encourage a pile on it's like when Jaden Sancho didn't go to the World Cup and I can't remember if it was Ryan Air or whoever was like oh if you don't worry Jaden you can come and fly with us and everyone was like oh it's out of order rah, rah, rah. and then people just join in oh, done it's it with the me. Same, same thing you've done, had it yourself done it, done it with me well, when it first all started nearly 10 years ago yeah. somebody took a picture of me where I worked Yeah. and it ended up on Lads Bible website Yeah. I went absolutely mad yeah, it's yeah. not nice, is it? it? No. I remember, I remember no, that. No regard and, and, for people's well-being and mental. And that leads me on to another thing as well, because we're going to get into something else as well. Are you, someone who features far too often on this channel, and forgive me, but he, he, we can't ignore him. I know we should, but we just can't. Um, I remember Talk Sport doing a thing of like trying to send people to your house. Oh, yeah. Back in the day, trying to find, you know, where's yeah. Andy Tate living and all that, which is just literally doxing someone. On, on the radio. It's just harassment. Yeah, no, harassment. No two like, ways about go and find it. where Blaine he lives in. Yeah. Blatant harassment, what it was. Yeah, what it was. was insane. Basically, I got a phone call from Adam and he said, are you okay? I went, yeah, why? What's wrong? He went, somebody's going to be banging on your house in a minute. And uh, I met my family home uh, at the time and I said, Dad, someone's going to knock on the door in a minute. And I got, he told me, put on the radio, put on the radio. And somebody phoned in, the, the actual radio station said, does anybody know Andy Tate? This is when you've gone viral. Yeah, this the, is when this yeah. is when I've gone viral. Does anybody know Andy Tate? Can we get in contact with him? So somebody phoned in claiming to know me and said they were going to knock on my door and expose me to the, to the, to the, to the country on the radio. Mm. And to be fair, like, nobody knocks on the door. I found out who it was, yeah. and I'm, let's let's just put it that way. <laughs> he backed he backed off Good. after when I, when I when I got through with him yeah. verbally. He said, "You stay away from me. Stay away from my family." I was only doing it for the laugh, mate. No, 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 no. You wasn't me. I'll get the yeah. police on you. This side or the other, and I had to go at them as well. They even phoned where I worked. Can we speak to him when I'm working and where? Um, I mean, where, where the job where I was he even said do you want to take a time out with your family I said no I'll ride this through I had people coming in from everywhere like uh, harassing me to be fair some people were nice but yeah. uh, the harassment I just want to work and do my job mate and it, yeah. it got to a point like do you know what I went to my caller and all that and he took me under the wing yeah. and, and I've been here I've been in this this game ever since and been looked after my well-being's all right sometimes i get down you get little tosses like that who do this that or the other you know what i mean like you say you come near my family and you get too close to me I, i'll give you a piece of my mind mate i'm yeah. telling you no but right so what you went through andy i remember those days was just unbelievable it was like i don't think people ever sort of grasp unless you're around you were getting mobbed everywhere and like you say 90 percent, especially the 99 percent of people just wanted to speak to you and just 
there's adulation, but then you And got, on top, I had my mum, who, who had dementia. She's not yeah, here anymore. So you're going on top anyway. of that, that was like, wow, that was brutal. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was in it's two horrible, places that. at the same time. I was like losing a family member, and I was like trying to cope with that, as well as uh, trying to cope with this. But I, here I am on the other side, I'm okay. Good lad. I mean, yeah, it was, it was horrendous, some of the, the treatment you get. And now, yeah. 10 years later, we're in sort of, we might have been more educated around this and more understanding, and yet we still see it. And like, you know, we mentioned there on some of the stuff that Hoyland's been getting. Just on the, the talk sport thing, Gabrian Bognor, who, Here he is. I said, sorry, and I apologise again, we should ignore him. We try, we do, we ignore so much, but there's times when we just go, no, we've got to speak about this. He's come out with something, Joseph, you can tell us what he's come out with. This is about Raphael Varane, yeah. and I think, I'm, am I right in thinking it's Varane, is, out of uh, Bonnell Hall and Varane, is it Varane that's got the most trophies? Um, I know it's close. So I think Abonahol won a championship with Villa when they got promoted again. I think I think Abonahol's so got, got a League Cup runners up medal. Yeah. P PTSD from Amanda Vidic. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, he's got, and he's that. got he's I got think the... he's got an FA Cup runners up medal. I don't well Varane oh, hasn't a got to a, Varane. Oh no, he's got a, uh, a Varane, oh, yeah, Varane's, 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 he was bitch slapped by Arsenal in the FA Cup. He's got that. He's got that. And, got that and one. then Varane's only got the the four Champions League winners medals. The I think he's got two three La Ligas. The the World Cup winners medal. Um, and Copa del Reyes as well. Yeah, Copa del Reyes. So yeah, it's, it's quite close. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Between the two of them, they've got a lot of trophies. To yeah. be fair, I think so. You know, it's safe to say that Gabriel Bonaho has, has almost had as many good games as Varane has won major trophies. I think that's fair to say. I don't know. I maybe, think, maybe I not. Think maybe maybe being slightly harsh to Varane. Gabriel Bonaho has probably had as many touches in that game that Gary Neville was pointing out as Varane's won. Champions League. Yeah, they I do go. remember that's, somebody that's dressed about some similar. Villa fans dressed as spacemen in tribute to Bon Lahore because what he says is out of space anyway. Yeah. Ah, right, that's quite fitting. That's so nice. what's he said recently then that we can we can get our teeth into? So he said there's a reason now why Varane is not starting and Johnny Evans and Maguire are starting. Uh, 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 well, yeah, obviously of course there is. Uh, he said I called it months ago that Varane is not the player United fans think he is. He's had an amazing career at Real Madrid. They don't let players go. Uh, they let Casemiro and Varane go because they're not at the top anymore. And yesterday that showed he came on and didn't know where he was. He could have given a penalty away when he came on, but Maguire did, which is weird. Uh, he could have done. Well, of course he could have done. He's playing for Man United. You can give away a penalty if you want. It's to, like, but he it's didn't like, give I like that. Away. He could have, but he let Maguire do it instead. Yeah, he let his, his you know, his. You better. say this one. Yeah, exactly. Which is even worse because he's throwing Maguire under the bus there. The last goal, he's nowhere to be seen, and Diogo Delo's defending for the third against the far post. Poor defending. That's Varane's fault as well. Um, I, I just like this thing of like basically saying Real Madrid sold as a dud yeah. you think like Varane's had injury issues and he was poor last night he, he had a bad game for United yeah. but when he's fit he has had very few bad games for Manchester United I agree. and you can question whether you you know if you want to or you can sort of ask the question of you know will he be turned by the Saudi money with the, the, probably an offer in the summer will he rethink that if United don't take step forwards this season those are but like Last season, Martinez and Varane were one of the best centre-back partnerships in Europe. Yeah. I think they had more clean sheets than anyone in the league. Yeah, like, I know that we conceded a lot of goals in certain games, but there was a point when Varane, Martinez and Casemiro played together. I think they lost like two games last season. Like, they were fantastic. So this idea that now, because finally, months after you said it for the first time when you were wrong, and you're still wrong, he's had a bad game and he's not quite at his, at his peak form. Now you were right, patting himself on the back. It's just nonsense. Like, you've got 500 things that disagree with you and one that agree with you, so you were right. It's just awful. It's awful punditry. It's stupid. It's literally just the words of a stupid person. And, he's, and you know, watching the games, well, there's a reason Maguire's playing. Yeah, there is. But I bet you don't even know the reason. He thinks it's because he's Varane shit. Well, he isn't, obviously. Well, the funny thing with that whole Varane argument as well is this thing of Real Madrid don't let players go. United, United go, you know, fans think he's this better player than he is and all the rest of it. Like, someone can leave Madrid and be good enough for United. Yeah. That can happen. <laughs> Someone can leave Madrid and not be good enough for Madrid at that time, or th they might not need them, and be good enough for United. 
it can work both ways. We've yeah. seen players like Adebayor go to Madrid or yeah. Chicharito when he weren't getting the United side go to Madrid. It yeah. can work both ways. It depends what your squad is made up of, what your team is made up of and what you need at that time. So this whole thing of like, oh, they let Casemiro go and they let Varane go and United well, suck him well, because... Let Ronaldo you know, go and he did all right at Juventus. So yeah, well, he got off uh, was it, like, like, more than a goal game. a game for Juventus. Like the, yeah. Like, yeah, so it's not like just because they've left Madrid and come to United, just because they left Madrid, they're not good enough for United. They can be surplus to requirements or, United, or Real Madrid can afford to let them go yeah. and they can be just what United need. And we needed Varane. And we yeah. need Varane for a long period of time. Yes, he's having a bit of a time of it at the minute. Not getting in the team. Didn't have a good game against Copenhagen. But yeah. last season, like you said, he was a big part of the reason we finished third and won the Carabao Cup. And he played a, a World Cup a trophy, final. A trophy that... Gabriel Bonhoeffer couldn't win, by yeah. the way, and he's still bitter about, like Andy said. Got to the World Cup final as well with France, as you pointed out. Only went off in extra time, yeah. injured. I'm not saying that cost him the game because, it, you know, it didn't really hurt him because he was playing really well for him. He's an important player for them. Did, yeah. And then he's retired from international football to focus on his club career. He's turned down a move to Saudi Arabia. So it's not like it's, he's an awful person here, Raphael Varane. He's obviously done his best to try and yeah. be available and work hard for Manchester United Football Club. He's just a touch injury prone but he's a Rolls Royce of a defender he's a far better footballer than Gabby and Bonlehor ever was now don't get me wrong you can still criticise a player when you're not as good as him I criticise footballers and I can never play professional football but when we've got someone like Bonlehor you see it week in week out mm. about United inconsistency the one with Casemiro where he had his hands around someone's neck oh he's got to go and the next week should have been arrested yeah, should have been arrested it. it happens to someone else he's like oh the kid's diving or whatever there's just this level of nonsense that comes from him because he knows what he's doing so, well I don't actually think he knows what he's doing but talk sport know what they're doing clip it up get it out there and people like us forgive us we talk about it because we want to defend our players and stick up for yeah. someone who whether he's playing well or not is a very very good footballer yeah I don't this thing of like Madrid don't let players go well they do <laughs> Like, what, what you're telling me Ozil was shit, shit at Arsenal? Or Odegaard's been shit at Arsenal? Yeah. Or, like, I mean, even trying to say Varane's been bad at United. No. He might not have been available as much as we'd like, but he's certainly not been a, a disaster by any means at Manchester United. Like, no. good teams let less players go in their prime than bad teams because they don't have to sell them, and typically those players want to stay. Who left United between 1999 and, and 2013 and went on to have way better careers? Ronaldo, that's it. Like, it doesn't happen. PK. PK, <laughs> but again, I'm reaching. There you go. Well, I'm reaching. Roy. I'm reaching. Nah, I don't know. Van Nistelrooy. I know what you mean. But he, he did okay, but he never he, hit the highs he did no. at United. No, goals no, 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 but he won a La Liga. Yeah, a cup but it, it, yeah. so it happens That's occasionally. What I mean, it wasn't yeah. like, but it, but not. this is the case with all teams. You know, Real Madrid, because they're one of the best in Spain, don't let players go if they want to keep them. United didn't for years. City don't. Bayern Munich don't. That's just the game. But occasionally you do. And also, let's not forget. There was a few Madrid fans saying last season they could have done with Casemiro. Yeah. Madrid didn't set the world alight last season. They were poor. Yeah. And there was a, I was sort of like watching a few games and it was like a few, players, a few Madrid fans saying, you know what, we could have done with Casemiro yeah, in this game. Yeah, they peaked after we that third in a row. We, we could have had a, you know, could have had him in this midfield. He could have done a job for us. He could have offered that little bit more protection that we needed in some of the games that they, they struggled in. So it's not just a case of, oh, Real Madrid never let players go or any good. They do. And they have done, and some of these players, like Varane and Casemiro, have done a job for Manchester United. And the, it feels at the minute like VAR's against us, the media's against us, pundits, ex-pundits are against us, even luck. I know people don't like luck, but there is an element to it in football, obviously, is against us. We've been here before where Ferg used to be the, G, the master at getting everyone sort of in that psyche of it's us against the world. Mm. Do you see Ten Hag doing that? Do you think he could say luck to his team or whatever, or just the club, the fans, the, the players, like, look... We're up against it, but use it as a bit of a rallying cry. Do you think that could happen? Yeah, I think it. I think we should, Dan, and I think people within the club as well, maybe say, use it as a rallying rallying call, block people out, ban journalists, piss them off even more. Us against the world. Mm. Famous quote, famous song. Just go for it. Let's say unite everybody around this. The performance from last night as well. Use it. Go forward with it. I've seen enough there to say we can be all right in the league and we mm. can finish in a healthy position. Not, not win anything, but we finish high and we finish proud. I've seen enough there and we use it and we go forward onto, onto Saturday with that. And, and that's what Ten Hag should do. And I think, I would say I've seen the reaction from Bruno, we see the reaction from the players last night as well. They're hurting. And you know what? You've seen what you can do. 
you start feeding up, feeding Highland, mm. p- play that game again, and we'll be fine. That that that, that us against the world mentality is yeah. such a huge motivation uh, motivator in football, it yeah. ca- or it can be. Jose Mourinho is the king of it. At Porto, he he loves adding to the the picture and the the sort of aura around a team. He loves this. We're these tiny underdogs. No one can believe what we're doing. No one thinks you can do it. He did the same. I mean, amazingly, at Inter Milan, you know, it was this thing of like, look at this, basically retirement home of supposedly past it players, Cambiasso, uh, Milito, like some Zanetti, of the players, yeah. uh, Zanetti. The, the whole team was full of them. Players who you think well, they're probably past their best now, and he turned them into the best team in Europe. Won a treble. He, yeah, and 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 certainly short term, it's a phenomenally motivating like idea and I think sometimes you run out of steam long term because you can't keep going well, you know we've just won a treble no one believes in us well they yeah. do yeah, yeah. but I think for a short term push Ten Hag now giving it like you said look at this look at what's going against us look at what you have to fight against this is what we have to do now we have to look at that we have to look at VAR the media want your backs everything you do they're going to cr- scrutinise you and it's us lot in this room against all of them that can be a massive motivator and I do think with him coming out and talking about some of the decisions he's, he, maybe he's building that and long term like I said you need tactics you need stability you need you know a, a vision but short term it can absolutely Oh, I'll tell around. you what, I'll, one last thing. Start challenging ch- decisions as well. If if we're getting pressured and VAR's not going, challenge him. Yeah. If other teams are doing it, you go at the referee. You demand a VAR check. Because if we're getting it, we we, we should give it back. Yeah, because he's been relatively polite so far at Tanag, aren't you? You're right. I think I think we saw it after the Copenhagen game. He's getting annoyed at it. He's getting mm. more and more frustrated. And I can see, like you're saying, Andy, him sort of becoming more vocal about it. Lads, always a pleasure. Despite it being a testing week for Manchester United, we've got the Luton game. Hopefully, as Andy was saying, we can use this as a motivating factor. No one thinks we can beat Luton. Yeah, yeah. Come on! We can. We can defy the odds. Otherwise, bring me sunshine, bring me laughter, bring me life. Oh. Bring me life. What a lovely sentiment to end it on. You know where to find Andy Tate, all of your socials. Go and check him out. You know where to find Joe Smith as well. Make sure you are checking out the Green King Sport Instagram account as well. Big thank you to them for sponsoring this podcast. That's been Andy Tate. That's been Joe Smith. I've been Jay Moy. This has been Off The Bar. Don't forget to hit like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching.